go straight now to Utrecht. Of course, there was that devastating tornado on Friday night. Our reporter, Avi Mtila, is there, and I believe he has the minister and the mayor with him. Good morning once again, Avi Sally, yes, I am joined by the minister, yeah, uh, Justice, uh, Justice and Correctional Services Minister uh, Ronald Namula, as well as the mayor of this district, Dr. Ngobane, who have basically just come here yeah, to see the damage and they saw from themselves. They've been about, uh, they've, they've actually done just a walkabout uh, where uh, the, the residents, the employees of the correctional services here yeah, at the Vatavel uh, Correctional Service reside. They've seen um, the roofs that are literally ripped apart, house to house, the garages that are open, trees that have been uprooted. I just want to touch with the minister just to find out in terms of the plans, what we can expect. Thank you for joining us, minister. Uh, but the plans, what, what, what's going to happen here for this correctional service? Yeah, obviously, firstly for us is to thank uh, the community around for having helped our officials, the mayor in the district and the local municipality and the whole government of KwaZulu Natal. We have helped our officials here to respond quickly to the disaster and the situation, and it has enabled us to respond quickly so that the services are not disrupted in the correctional center, and as a result, there's no one who has escaped, and even in the center, no one was injured. The officials, no one was injured, including their families, about 200 families, no one was injured. So it's, it's still a miracle as we have moved around. So we are going to assess the situation and we'll be able to make emergency plans to ensure that the place is rehabilitated and restored to its original position. But we need to first uh, do assessments with the public works and everyone involved so that we're able to give a clear uh, a report based on, the, on that assessment. Minister, the houses you see behind you are just some of the 46 that have been ravaged. Uh, um, the families don't have water, don't have electricity, don't have shelter, basically. Do we have timelines in terms of when they'd be assisted? Yeah, obviously, as you can see, uh, the community has sprung into action. The various NGOs around have come in and in handy. And the officials have been receiving food, their families. And uh, it is clear that up until uh, Tuesday, they will still be able to help. We will also see from our side what, after the assessment, what else can we help with with regard to electricity and uh, the restoration of, uh, of, the, of the issue of the, of the water. And I'm happy that the district is also here. They are helping the, the correctional center with regard to that restoration of the water pipe and the various issues that relate to electricity are being attended to. So we believe uh, the situation is under control and it will be handled properly by all involved, all the stakeholders that are here. So in terms of timelines, um, they'll find out after the assessment, if I'm, I'm hearing you correctly, when they'll be allocated shelter and when they'll be assisted essentially? No, they've already been allocated temporary shelter, as you know, in the community facility, and uh, some uh, have already taken leave, and those that their areas is not, uh, is not damaged, they are already they are the ones who are working full-time. An emergency plan has been put in place that ensure that other officials from across the province are brought in to help the, in the work of the centre. So work is still continuing. It is put in, in progress. The only thing that we need to deal with is the assessment of the damage, uh, what will be the cost to re restore the whole place, and what will be the cost of restoring the other infrastructure issues of water and, uh, and electricity. That is what I'm talking about. But in terms of an emergency plan, it's already in action. Thank you very much. Sally, now I just want to bring in Dr. Ngobani, who is the district mayor here. We understand um, this is the fourth tornado, we, I mean the one that even happened last night. Uh, I just want to find out, thank you for joining us, Dr. Ngobani, thank in you. terms of uh, plans, what is happening behind the scenes in terms from, from the official position? Thank you very much. Uh, greetings to the viewers. And I just want to say, as a district mayor, I'm very, very much you know, uh, flabbergasted by the situation that is taking place in my district. Uh, while it is taking place in my district, but I really do take cognizance of the fact that definitely two, yeah, ours on Friday, it was the third one. But I think in, in the wake up, up of today, it is the fourth, there's a fourth one that has taken place in Ulundi as well, which I think definitely it is, you know, a call for, you know, a, a really, really serious intervention to try and see, especially with the uh, geographical kind of a situation where we need really to look at things, you know, beyond just the, 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 the academic approach. But I think we need to go beyond that to try and see what can be done. But I think really based on what you've just said now, I want to just to say to you, um, there are measures in place, definitely. We are very much grateful with the intervention from the, from, from the province, uh, led by, you know, MEC Shomuka, who has really sent uh, his teams to be on board to make sure that they come in and assist us in the districts because as districts alone, we cannot cope. But I think we just need assistance from province, which has already done that. 
and I think really we have we have seen you know uh, quite a lot of you know inter in, in, in interventions to try and help us that it is not only about that it's not only about cocktail alone but I think social development as well has sent their teams to try and help us you know to help those families because we also have got families in and around here because this is an area of what three of of of, of uh, a local municipality which is part of the um, uh, Amajuba district and I think we have also have seen you know a SASA South African um, uh, social services you know association which is definitely under you know uh, uh, social development to be able to provide help for those families that will need counseling because a lot of other things that need to be done is to counsel our people because their children there are also others that have witnessed something they've never seen before where they would really not know whether are they going to be up alive or they're going to be up you know you know in, and they're still you know in the graveyards so I think that one on, it, on its own it really has caused a lot of havoc it has caused a lot of um, um, you know uh, um, I mean a lot of you know, um, uh, panic within the family. So they are providing that psychological also, uh, you know, uh, uh, counseling for them. And I think beyond that also, we have seen also a, a lot of other departments, you know, coming in. And also in addition to that, you know, Good Samaritans there, private sector, NGOs that have come up really to really add value to our people because those people have in the households that they are in, they, the, some of the houses, they just blown up completely. I think about five of them have been blown out completely out, and then the others have been partially been you know been about 15 to other to other to about 15 about 15 to 20, they have been partially been you know um, a damage where the roof has gone off completely, and have, hence therefore they really are an indication that they need to be some help. So the help that we are is, is still anticipating as well from the is, is not only about you know um, and the the one that I've already mentioned, but also help. I mean, expecting help also coming from human settlement to be able to help us with the the reconstruction of those houses, and then also we need you know assistance in terms of you know making sure that you know these people have got food on the table. You know, in the meantime, because some of them the, 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 while blowing out you know the roofs. Even the food, even the beds, even everything in the in, 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 in the in the houses, they have been they've been they've been they've been, they've been blown off. So I think really, you know, that is basically what one can say. But I think assistance that we're getting is is going to go beyond just really limiting it to our uh, our district here. But it will have to go beyond, you know, the whole province because I know that our officials that are coming from PIP, PDMC, you know, they are already now from here. They are going to Ulundi to try and, and address the issues there as well. Thank district you, so much. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, saying that that the assistance will not only for this be for this particular uh, district, but is in fact needed for KZN as a whole. I'm telling you, um, at this correctional services centre, the houses have literally been blown away. They have seen uh, for themselves as they make their way now uh, to the to the actual uh, prison, just to assess the damage there. And if you, uh, as you heard from uh, the minister earlier on that, then after that they'll they'll pave way in terms of what needs to be done. Thank you very much. That's Aviwe Mtila coming to us live from Utrecht in KwaZulu-Natal.